Okay, let's get started here. Uh, again, I'm Brian Gardner, welcome to this uh, video workshop. It's gonna be on our YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to fly by the seat of my pants uh, and design on demand. Part of the beauty of WordPress and the block editor is that it allows you to do these things on the fly. Uh, and I think, and even had an interaction yesterday with somebody who was uh, not informed that what they were hoping could happen by way of a custom block or previously used plugin, uh, is something that's functionally part of WordPress core now and very easy to do. And so uh, it delights me when I get to educate folks on how easy things can be. Now, I also caveat that with I spend my day all day in this. And so therefore, I probably am more into all of this than most folks. And understandably, why we're here is to help uh, sort of bring the cliff notes of you know what's coming with WordPress, how things work. Uh, people are hearing things like blocks and patterns and site editors and stuff like that. And so sort of explain the vernacular and show people how things are done in the way that WordPress is currently at and where it's continuing to go. Uh, so that being said, um, Sam, is there anything I need to know ahead of time, uh, questions or comments before I get started? Otherwise, we can just jump right in. Nope, nothing I see. Go for it, Brian. Sweet. Okay, so we had uh, part of the questionnaire, the the login, we had people um, for sign up uh, present a couple of ideas uh, in which I'm going to grab a couple from there. And so also to table set, part of this workshop is uh, on demand. So if there's anything that you've been wondering, how the heck do you build this with WordPress now? Right? Like I've tried or it didn't work, or I just want to see how this works in general. Um, obviously, we don't have the time to build like full on websites. So if there are components of a website that you're like, hey, how does this work? Or how do I set up a social icons row of things or whatever? Uh, let's use the chat. And maybe we'll prompt it with like a Q colon, just so Sam can quickly find them. Like, hey, how do you do this? Or can you build this or design that sort of a thing? Uh, I have a couple up front that um, I just saw on a list that I'm gonna go try to go do. And for those of you who've been around for 17 years, hopefully everybody, uh, there was a movie called The Bee Movie with Jerry Seinfeld. And there was a part in the movie where he's getting ready to take off and, and do a thing. And he's like, scared out of my mind, check. And so uh, this is unscripted. Uh, I'm building live on the fly, designing live on the fly. So uh, what you get to see is uh, A, how it's done, but also maybe some pain points and where I sometimes struggle or get confused uh, as well. So that being said, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen in just a second. Um, and then Sam, maybe you could just unmute once I'm good to go with uh, my screen share, so. Yep, we can see it. Okay, so you don't see all the little Zoom things that are here. These toolbars that always seem to get in the way. Um, okay, so the first question, and this is an interesting one because I like to design stuff like this often, uh, and people have asked about this as well. Um, and so what I'm going to show you is just, uh, I think Lawrence, I'm not sure if he's here on the call or not, but he had asked about uh, the Powder News theme, which is sort of like a split screen thing. And you can see here, I'm just going to scroll. So it's kind of like a... Uh, this is a stationary kind of left-hand side thing, uh, and this is the right-hand um, part of it as well. And so try to get all these things out of my way. Uh, I'm going to use Frost, and so I'm going to table set here. For starters, uh, I'm using local. I use local to develop and test everything all day, every day. And so uh, one of the things I'm also going to do, because I knew that there were a few questions relative to WordPress 6.5, is show you quickly how to set up uh, a testing environment for uh, what we're now in WordPress, the beta period before the 6.5 release. So uh, like I said, I'm using local. I've got a blank uh, install of WordPress and Frost here locally. And what I'm going to do really quickly is just go into plugins and I'm going to show you how, if you are interested, and Sam has a link also to a builder's article that we had written about this. Damon uh, Cook from our team also kind of uh, created a blueprint. So it's even easier than what I'm showing you. But I'm in local. I've got a fresh WordPress install. I'm going to install the WordPress beta tester plugin. And as I activate that and then go to settings, I'm just going to kind of whip through sort of quickly. If you select bleeding edge and then beta RC only and then hit save changes. And then right here, there's a link to the updates page. What this does is say, hey, well, you're running the beta tester plugin. It's currently got 6.43. However, there's a stable RC or beta in this case. Uh, WordPress 6.5 beta 2. And I'm going to click that. And what it's going to do is just update my system to be running WordPress 6.5 beta 2. You can see here. Uh, and so now I've got access to what's presumably going to be coming in WordPress 6.5. And what this allows me to do is go in and 
do things normally with the current version, the beta version of WordPress to see if there's anything uh, problematic or if it trips me up or if there's you know bugs. And I've already found a few. Uh, I'm not sure if Ann McCarthy is on yet, right or not. I know she signed up, but um, Ann is part of the team at Automatic uh, who's uh, crucial to these types of testing periods. And so, um, and uh, just to very quickly show you as well, uh, if you're done, you can go back to the beta testing thing and you can then go into this screen and then downgrade like back to 6.43, which is the stable version of WordPress. So just wanted to sort of explain how that works. And so I'm gonna go uh, directly in and work on, again, designing this page. I'm gonna go relatively quickly just because there's a lot to do. There's a replay available and also because I just wanna to get to as many things as possible. So in this case, I'm just going to build it in um, in the, the page editor. Normally, I would go in and create like a template for this thing, like so that this would this would work uh, theme wide. But in this case, I'm just going to build like a blank page just just so you can see how it's done. So I'm going to call this uh, split screen, and I'm going to go to template because what it allows me to do uh, in Frost Frost has a blank template which literally will. Um, I'll show you. It's literally a blank template. As I open my screen in a new tab, there's nothing here because there's no header, there's no footer. It allows you to just have like a blank canvas. Uh, and so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a group. I always build everything inside of a group because it allows me to just do a lot of things. Uh, this group, I'm going to make it just go full width so it's the entire screen. Now inside of this, I'm going to add um, columns block and I'm going to just arbitrarily pick 50-50. Uh, I'll change that at some point. Um, so as you can see, this is a little bit less than 50-50. But um, so let me just actually, I'm going to solve this problem right here. So the content area on the right side, I'm going to change to 60%. You can see what I'm doing here, hopefully. And I'm also going to remove the, the block app that's here. Um, just because I don't want any weird kind of orphan spacings between the columns. And so um, that zeroes out all of the block gap in between the columns vertically and horizontally. Um, okay, so I'm going to hit update. And uh, so what I want to do here, I'm going to move this tab over. So I'm going to try to build this section sort of quickly. So we've got an image, we've got some text. Uh, the opt-in form I'm not going to do just because it's custom code that I've got in here and then down here. So. Uh, I'm in the first column, uh, and so I'm going to add an image. I'm going to upload an icon. I think I've got something handy here. Uh, obviously, that's way too big, and so let's just say we want to make that 60 pixels. Um, underneath that, I'm going to add a heading, and we're just going to call this Frost. And then after that, the best WordPress oops, theme. All right, so I'm going to hit update. We can see how things look. Obviously, it's sort of we're not anywhere near where we want to be. Um, so inside of the group that's full width, I want to set the columns to actually uh, also be full width because what that'll also do is just then spread things out like this. Um, going to come over here to this column. I'm going to add a group inside of that also because I want to make this a black background and i'm going to add a group inside of there i'm going to add a heading i had a different plan for this um page title i'm going to make this group going to give it a background color of so we can see what we're doing. Um, let's see here. I had sample copy right here that I'm going to steal. I was going to build this as a template, but then like right as I got started, I chose not to. So now I'm, this is a quick way to copy things. Uh, okay, so I am here. Well, there we go. Okay, so what do we got here? Uh, set. See, this is what happens. 
I set the page title background and I meant to do this. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to hit update. We can just kind of see where we're at. Uh, okay. So we're kind of sort of getting there. There's a lot of work here to do. Uh, and so what we want to be is that. And so I'm going to, in this section, I'm just going to put at the very top really quickly, I'm going to add my, my image. Now, again, I would build this as a template. And so you would use different blocks. You would use like the page title, the page content featured image in this case. And that's how it was done in powder. Uh, but this is more of like a structural, how it would get done. I've already got my image up here. So, um, so we've got this. Now this content, this would all normally be like page content. I'm going to put it in a group so I can throw some padding around there. You can kind of see as I hit publish where we're at. So we've got some padding here. Now let's go back to the left side because this is kind of where the meat potatoes generally is. Um, so we're in this column. Now I hope I can do this right. I'm gonna grab all the contents inside of that column and I'm going to throw them in a group. And I'm, all, I'm gonna group it again because one of these needs to be a row. And this is where groups and rows and stacks and alignments get kind of tricky. Uh, and so I'll we'll just have to sort of uh, test that this will hope that this will be the case. So this is going to, I'm going to set this, the, the outside row so that everything inside of that column, I'm going to set to a hundred percent viewport height. And then I'm also going to set sticky to this group. Um, oops, no, I'm in the wrong. There we go. Position sticky. Let's see where we land after I update this. Okay. So now we've got this centered and now it's sticky. And so, um, so this row is basically centering the, um, content and because there's only one element in there, which is why I had to wrap these three things in a group, it sort of does it nicely. Uh, and so what I'm also going to do is just quickly do like a center for these things. Just align the image center, uh, hit update real quick. And then we can see, I must have missed this one. All right, see, this is this is where it's all at, people. See, this is now you can watch me struggle through why this is not working as I want it to do. Maybe that center it. There we go. Perfect. Um, so we're we're whoops. We're basically there for all intents and purposes. Again, um, there's ways that you could do this, and I won't go through and rebuild it all together, but um, just because we want to do other things, but the gist of it is, uh, this entire screen is wrapped in a group inside of that group are columns. So you add the column block and then there's two columns. You can change the width. However, this column is 40%. This column is 60%. Um, this column inside of it has a, gr uh, a row, which is also a group, but it's a vertical stack, um, that has uh, content centered vertically and horizontally. And also it's sticky. So as you scroll up and down on the right side, this whole thing stays and you have to set the viewport height of this uh, row at a hundred just so that it fills in the screen and does the kind of the flex box stuff nicely here. Um, again, uh, I would probably, as I did in the theme, build out this section using like um, a template part. And I would do that more at the template level in the site editor rather than the page editor. But this was just like a quicker way to kind of knock through this. I didn't want to screw up the rest of the um, the demo site. So I'll probably just leave this one at that one. Um, I guess if anything, you know, if we wanted to do something in this this column over here, we could you know add some padding or whatever if we wanted to just make you know or add a menu on top of it, which is kind of what we've got here. But uh, so that's kind of a quick version of that. Hopefully that suffices. And I see a lot of chat uh, going on. So I'm going to stop there just because I want to make sure there's time for other stuff. Um, so Sam, any questions relative to what I just showed here in this case? And maybe there's some or maybe there's none. I don't think any specific questions. There's talk about uh, groups and rows and stacks and alignments. It's something that you mentioned. It's a little bit tricky. And someone mentioned that would be a great thing to focus on in a future workshop, which is a good idea. Yep. Um, 
and people were a little confused because they saw your admin sidebar and they were wondering, you know, why they could see that. But we we discussed that. I don't think there was anything, any questions specifically about this, though. At this gotcha. Point. Uh, the real quick answer to groups, rows, and stacks is that a group is basically like a wrapping container or a wrapping div. That was the original, like, hey, let's just take everything that's in here and just wrap it in a div. Um, then we had a thing that came out of that, like a, a variation called a row, which, and I'll just click through to um, maybe like either the footer or the header. Um, a, uh, the row block allows you to sort of change the orientation of the elements that are inside of it. So instead of them just stacking one on top of another, um, they stack, uh, well, not stack, but they get arranged horizontally. Um, and so like your elements kind of go across the screen rather than up and down it. So for instance, like if you have a header that's got, you know, the site title, a logo, some, some menu items here, and then social media icons that allows you to just wrap that in one thing called a row. And then... Uh, all of that. And there there are some more that are coming. I think there, I don't know if the grid um, variation of the group block is actually going to be coming in 6.5. I know it's part of Gutenberg's experiments right now. Uh, and so as we're kind of working through like the, um, how these things work and how they're built and how the UI is uh, revealed to folks, um, the usability part of it will sort of inform how they, how this is all um, coming together. I think Nick Diego a while back did also um, uh, a video workshop on like basically the group block and kind of walks through all these things. Maybe someone can find that link or, or whatnot, but, um, okay. What else, what else do we have in through the chat? Yep. Let's I see. see one that just came through, which I think would be a great one. A post yep. title as part of the post template positioned under the title. Okay. Can you repeat that again, Sam? Yep. Post subtitle as a part of the post template positioned under the title. So the subtitle positioned under the title of a post. Um, post okay. okay. I, I think that what we're really talking about maybe like the excerpt, right? The WordPress excerpt. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Okay. So let me get to a post. Let me pop this open and right click. Uh, so here is my, my post template. So if I go into the, um, actually, let me create a little excerpt first. So, so if you go into here and then down here and excerpt. I got all these little things. I'll just say this is a sample excerpt period. Now, if I go into the editor and then click on templates, uh, single posts is what we're talking about. So we want to click on the single post template. So what this does is this is the template that's used for every single post on the site. Uh, as I often recommend, I'm going to pop open the list view, which is this little icon of three things, because it really helps you sort of see like the tree of what's inside of all of this, because sometimes this all gets confusing. Uh, so as I open this up, you can see uh, there's a group at the top of this template, which houses the post title. And then this row, which we talked about earlier, it's kind of like this grouping of items uh, horizontally. And I'm going to go and I'm just going to add the excerpt block. So you just and then it shows up here. Now you can use the arrows to move this up and down. You can do things like make text smaller if you want. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit save twice to get that going. And if you uh, do that, then the excerpt uh, will show up under every single post. Now uh, the excerpt block, I believe has some settings. Um, let's see. Thought this had maybe it's in a different context. Um, see, this is what I sometimes it's hard to remember what what is where. Um, I'm, maybe I'm thinking of the excerpt as part of the query loop where you can determine how many characters show up. I think that's the excerpt inside the context of a query loop. Uh, so, like if you had like a grid of posts and you just didn't want, because by default, if you don't have an excerpt actually written out in that sidebar panel, it does like several hundred characters and kind of then truncates it. And so you really don't want that. And so there's a way to limit that. Um, so you could say like show 20 characters before you do the dot, dot, dot uh, sort of a thing. So hopefully that answers the question on adding that below the post title. And I think yeah. the, a bigger part of the question was um, adding to the post template. The so post. yeah, so like the, the template, like the single post template. 
and then adding uh, that. Oh, you just did that? That's what this is. Um, now, to go back and just maybe to find what I was trying to do, <laughs> um, let me just click on my name. So this is sort of like the archive template for the author. We'll do, actually, yeah, let's do that. Um, no, I'm going to do, this is the, this is the category archive. So maybe, uh, in this case, I'm in the archive template now. So this handles all of the, uh, things And I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing. In this case, we're inside the query loop. So this might, um, do what I was talking about. Uh, okay. So that's the excerpt. Oh yeah. That's, this is different because this template actually has the excerpt here. But to show you what I was talking about inside of the query loop, you can see over here, maximum number of words. And so like you can reduce this to to be whatever you want. And so that will, um, when there's more content, it's kind of like, you know, two or three lines worth of stuff. Uh, so that's kind of the same thing. All right, what else, what else? Anything, anything else? I do have a backup because I know there was a question about button hovers, which I'll get to if there's nothing else at the moment. I do see a question that yes. says, um, is there an easy way to figure out what template a page post, et cetera, is using, or is this something we just need to know? Um, so by default, depending on the theme, um, obviously the WordPress uh, template hierarchy, there's like the single template and the page template. Some themes have, like in the case of Frost, additional page templates. And since I'm here, uh, you can see there's no title, which is literally a template that takes the title away from it so that you could do things like build home pages that don't have like a title here at the top. Um, but when you're editing a post, I'll go in here or editing a page, um, two things, the quick edit, you can see the available templates for this, for, for pages are available here. So I could take this sample page and let's just say I went blank and then I clicked on sample page. It would obviously use the blank template. So this is just the content with nothing else. Uh, similarly, if I went and did no title and updated, um, we would get the temp, it would then use that template. And so when you're in the actual editor here, uh, over here on the right hand side, this is the template that it's currently using. And so, uh, and this is a little bit of a difference in 6.5. This used to be like a little bit of a drop down, but now when you click it, uh, you have these options. Uh, and so swap template would allow you to like, um, pick templates, although we may have just discovered a bug because there should technically be the the um, the default template in this view because there's no way. Oh, use default template. Never mind. There we go. So uh, so now we're using the default template. So if you click on this and do swap template, it'll show the other templates, which are blank and no title. And it gives a little bit of a visual. So uh, if you've got you know a theme that wants to provide just several different templates for either single posts I've seen often you've got like templates that have like sidebar left and right uh, and stuff like that. And so like you're able to go in and select those templates on a per post or per page basis. And additionally, and I won't go into doing that here, but if you go to templates, uh, you can add a new template as well. Uh, so you can go to custom template, create a new template. And so what that does is it saves this template to the database. It does not save it back to the theme itself. So like on a theme update, this will not get overwritten, but you can go in and create templates uh, as well that you could use, you know, maybe you've got a membership site, you want a specific sidebar uh, for all of the, the pages that are in that section. Uh, and so this kind of opens up the template hierarchy and takes like the code out of building these templates because you can use them just in the site editor, um, laying things out as you want and so on, so. There are a few more questions, Brian, not specific to something to build, but just questions. Um, sure. Do you get to a page through the pages or do you go through the editor to pages? There are different tools within each. So how do you normally get to a page? So generally speaking, you one should still just use the common post and page interface that's here. This is how you can go in and do that. Now, uh, I, I want to say it's 6.4. Uh, new to 6.4, maybe it's 6.5, I can't remember. You can go into editor, and if you click on pages, you now have the ability here to manage all pages. And this is sort of the introduction of what's going to ultimately be the new design, the, the new admin design for WordPress. 
And so this is sort of, it's experimental in the sense that it's not the default out of the box. That's still just like what I just showed, but this is a different way into um, editing these pages. So like if I click on sample page, I'm now also, and this is, this looks different, right? Because this is sort of what's going to ultimately be like the new way of designing and building and adding content. Uh, it tells me up at the top, I'm on the sample page I'm editing. So this is like editing the content in the page, not the template. Uh, if I was in a template, there would be different notes around here saying you are editing the template, which most people don't want to do. You just want to go in and edit the content of your page. Uh, and so there's, there's now two ways in. Uh, I believe posts at some point will receive the same treatment, uh, but for now it's just pages. Okay, I see a question here. I'm going to reform this into a block that you can build. Um, there's a question about adding image thumbnails for the blog post page and not just listing the blog posts. So can yes. you show using like the query loop and yep. showing like featured image, date, category, like build a, a cool query loop block? Uh, okay, so let me go in. Let me just add a little bit. Of, let me steal this content. Uh, so I'm going to go into the sample post because this isn't enough. Okay, uh, I'm also inside of this one post. If I had more, this would be better. Maybe I'd duplicate it, but I'm going to add a featured image just off the get go. Uh, okay, so by default, um, this is the archive page template, right? Or the archive template. Now, if you go into the editor, we're going to go into templates and we're going to go into all archives. So this this is what handles that. Um, two things. One of which, and I hope I can do this right, because sometimes this gets tricky. So if you select the query loop here, depending on how your theme is done, and Frost has this, uh, you can see that there's this replace option. Um, and so Frost has uh, three patterns that are called query patterns. And so you could actually, with just like one click, and I'll do it right now, uh, and this is grid of posts and three columns. And so it has like sort of these predetermined layouts for these archive um, query patterns. And so if I select that, what it does is it replaces the default word, you know, the stacked version with this new pattern. And I'm just going to pop this open. Uh, and so this is done in a grid view. So if I were to hit save, which I'll do, and I re refresh this page, it's going to go from what we see here um, to this new sort of layout, which would essentially be three across and then, you know, stacking them on top. So this is one way to do that. Um, this is the cheat code because it's kind of pre-built. So I think the original question, I'm just going to hit my back button, um, is this is back again to the default template. And if I go, I guess it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to add in here featured image block. And so you can see as I move this up, uh, let's just see what this looks like. So you, in this case, you can add the featured image you know, and then if there was more of these, uh, and I'll actually change this excerpt because as I showed you, oh, I have that. Watch me, let me save this really quickly. I wanna showcase the character count, but I need to get rid of the manual X. Okay. So I got rid of the manual. So by default, this is like the WordPress. It, this is sometimes too long, especially if you're like in a grid view, it's just too many characters. So. I'm going to go back in to templates, archives, and I'm going to click here. So this is the excerpt. And you can see as I, you know, maybe you're, you only want that much to show 20 words. So as I hit save, watch what happens. Then it sort of does that truncation. And again, especially in grid view, um, which I will go back and we'll go back to this grid view. In this case, we're gonna get 20. And maybe we don't even want that many. Maybe we wanna do something like that. And so you can kind of play with that to determine um, while we're doing it. And while we're here, um, okay, so post template, I'm gonna take this featured image and move it inside of the group, which is the entire post. Uh, and so we've got, you can see here, it's all selected. Uh, and for anybody who wants to do um, fun stuff. So this has a, so this group has a set of block styles here where you can apply certain block styles that Frost has de 
determined. Uh, you can see that there's a, a basically a solid drop shadow. Um, and so let's add some padding to this. And then I want to put a black border to make it. And then just to show you kind of like how you can quickly design like postcards and things of that nature. So, um, yeah. And can you, you can... show um, for the query loop? Can you show some of the filtering options? There was a question, kind of like, how do I show certain things in a query loop? Uh yes. So, certain options inside of the query loop. So, so there's grid view. Like, if you wanted to change the columns to like be two across, you could do that. So that'll obviously get wider. So they would be side by side. Um, trying to think of what else, what options are inside. I mean, you can. I think I'm thinking for the query loop, like uh, showing certain categories or. Yeah. So like. It, so this, yeah. So this is the archive template. Like, if you were to, in the, in what I'm about to show you is generally more used in the case of like if you were creating a WordPress page, like a home page that had like a certain section where you wanted to show, um certain types of, um, and I'm just going to do this because this is a good example. I just recently redesigned this site called Wellness Mama. And so for instance, uh, this is uh, Katie's homepage. And so it's built with blocks top to bottom. And this particular section is sort of like that query grid loop. And then I think there's a section further down. Uh, maybe not, no. So for instance, if we wanted this section to just pull in uh, posts from a very specific category, like in her, in this case, it's a recent article. So it's all of them, but maybe she wanted like recipes or podcast episodes or something like that. Um, in her homepage, you would use the query loop in the same way that we see it here. Uh, but over here on the right hand side, um, inherit query from template, we don't want to do, we would turn that off because uh, what that allows us to do is sort of override and determine um, what we want that query to run through. In this case, we do want posts. Um, and if you go down here, there's a thing called filters. And so uh, taxonomies, and I think uncategorized is the only one we've got here, but like you could type in recipes. And then what it does is it says everything inside of this query, only pull the recipes. And so that's a way uh, for back in the day, remember the, the big magazine style themes we did way back when? Um, so for instance, you could build like a page with five different query loops, each one, like if you're ESPN pulling in a different sport so that you can show all of the baseball articles here and then below that. Um, and so, and what's really nice is in the context of that, if we were to have done that, we could easily just take, you know, this query loop and like duplicate it like five different times, just change the category in each one. And all of a sudden you'd have a whole page of just different broken out sections. So it's kind of a quick way to kind of talk through that, but. Um, hopefully that makes a little bit of sense and at least shows these things are possible. Yes, thank you. There's a lot of positive uh, that this is useful, positive feedback about that. Yes. Um, you mentioned button hovers and there's another question about can you make the post increase in size as you hover over it? So maybe can we spend some time on some of like the hover options available in WordPress or with blocks um, or anything that you can show? Thank you. Yes, okay. So um, the good news is there are options inside of WordPress. The bad news is they're not all the options we want sometimes. Uh, I'm going to go in here. I'm just going to click over here to block styles. And so this is like the global styles interface. This is the little circle button that's highlighted here in dark. And what this allows you to do, and I'm about ready to, um, in the next day or so, record another video for our channel talking about designing in the editor and being able to use the editor um, to, to sort of do the design, which is its intent. Now, as a builder or a developer, the theme JSON file inside of a theme has corresponding controls to what you, what we see here. So theme JSON is basically what populates what we see, but all of this can be customized now here in the, um, the global styles interface. And so for instance, um, like if I wanted to click on colors, and so this is the this is all defined by theme JSON. The, the Frost theme says set all of these colors. Now inside of all of these colors, you have the ability to override them. So for instance, if you want this primary blue to be something totally different, you can. And what it does then is it says set this primary color to pink or whatever the hex code is. And anywhere on the site that uses the CSS variable, like basically has color primary, 
it'll change it across the entire site. Um, all of the changes that happen here in this UI get saved to the database, which means anytime Frost updates, um, it doesn't override your changes because uh, the theme itself is sort of like the the source of truth, but all of these changes go over the top, kind of like a like a child theme without it being a child theme. And so for those who use Genesis back in the day, everything was always protected when Genesis updates because the child theme did sort of all of the opinionation. And so all of the things that happen here are in that same vein. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and reset it back. Um, so to answer the question, uh, if you were to go to link, you'll see here in this interface that there's a, a tab here called hover, which means uh, you can change the color of link hovers throughout the site. Uh, right now, they're both set to black. I just, for whatever reason, have chosen. I'm going to actually do that. So I'm on the hover, and I'm going to say I want my links to hover to blue. So if I were to hit save and go anywhere on the site, you can see all of the links now inherit that hover color, which is great. Um, until you ask the question, which was asked ahead of time, what about buttons? And so if you click on buttons, unfortunately that doesn't, it, there's a little bit more nuance here because of the way the, the background color works and stuff like that. There's just some more things. Uh, there is not that. However, and I'll show you in theme JSON, this is where it's a little bit confusing. And so I'm inside my theme JSON. I will blow the screen up here in just a second. Um, Scroll down and okay. Hopefully. Oh, hang on. Okay. So I'm inside theme JSON and I'm gonna highlight this code. Hopefully it's big enough to see. Um, so this is specifying kind of all of the code that makes up the buttons. Now in theme JSON, you can see here you can change the hover color of buttons in theme JSON, but there's no corresponding and maybe this is a GitHub issue waiting to be waiting to be happened. Um, you could change that here. Uh, the the caveat is then if a theme updates, it's going to override that. So it's not necessarily ideal. Uh, one thing I linked to, and Sam, can you grab the paste bin thing? Yep. Um, so this is a good opportunity for custom CSS. And I'm going to go back to the Frost home page. Uh, and so um, this paste been here. This is some custom CSS that I had written just to showcase how you can do this in custom CSS, which is also protected from a theme update. Uh, so I'm going to go in here. I'm going to go back. So this is the global styles interface. If you click on these three buttons, there's this thing called additional CSS, which is if you're thinking about it from the customizer, uh, there was also the same thing. They may even be drawn from the same field. So whatever you put here, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just dump all of this CSS. And if you download Frost and grab this code from Pastebin, you'll be able to accomplish what I'm going to show you. Uh, this is a pretty, this isn't just a like a background color change. I wanted to try something unique. So I'm going to save this and we'll refresh on, I'll show you what this CSS does is kind of an effect like that. Uh, again, you can see there's quite a bit of code. It's something I either chat GPT or went to one of those Hey, how do you do a thing? And you find out like the snippets and then make it right. So um, generally you would just need like a background hover, but in the case I wanted to do the slide across um, the, while these things and in this exact um, animation probably won't ever land in WordPress core itself. And so additional CSS is the way to do that. Now, uh, another way around this, and let's see if I'm right, is if you go into blocks and Buttons, maybe maybe it's the button block. I thought there was a way that you can, maybe not. No, I, I thought I swear there was a way where you could do like individual custom CSS per block, but maybe not, uh, or I'm not doing it the right way. But this is the global one. So unfortunately, there's no UI for button hovers, uh, but there is still ways to pull things like this off. Great. Um, I see another question or another thing to build, if that's something you're ready for. Mm -hmm. OK, can you demonstrate how to create a visually appealing image gallery, such as those for a portfolio using the gallery block? Um. Yes. I might have to go quickly steal some images from somewhere. But uh, OK, so I'm going to create a page. I'm just going to call this 
portfolio. I'm just going to publish it. Um, and it might be able to just use the same thing. So if you do gallery, I'm not sure if it's going to let me like duplicate that. What I really need is like a bunch of these. Um, actually, you know what? Here we go. Welcome to my world. Images, Frost, real estate. Because I had a gallery preset at one point. So I'm uploading all these all these images. I'm just going to hit insert gallery. And I think by default, uh, WordPress kind of puts it into a grid depending on how many images you have. Now, if I select the gallery block back down here again, um, I can change how I want this laid out, you know, depending on uh, we want full size to make them the best. So in this case, I'm going to update this and we're just going to take a quick peek. We've got portfolio. So this is like a quick version of of what that is. Now, one cool thing with, let me close this out, uh, especially in this case, when you're using thumbnails, uh, WordPress now has, and I'm gonna have to find the UI because it just changed. Um, it's up here, right? Oh, somebody help me. There was a, a light box feature Uh, this is, this is, I love WordPress. In the current stable version of WordPress, there's a, it, it's over here in the, in this, the panel where you could say basically expand when clicked. Um, let's see if I can find it really quickly. Anne said that it's in the link, in the link, click on the link icon in the toolbar. Thank you. Thank you for saying, I knew it was somewhere different. Uh, okay, so, okay, so link, that makes, I, that does make sense. Uh, so uh, you could take this image and link off to like a URL. You could link it to an attachment page or there's now this new option, which moved from the sidebar panel. Thank you so much for helping me, uh, called expand on click. So I'm gonna select that for this first one uh, and watch what happens when you, So it kind of links to like the light box effect. And of course you can go through, I don't believe there is what the next question generally is, is, oh, is there like a pagination where you can then like click through to each one? I don't believe that's part of the UI if it will be, or if it's just not there yet. In other words, if you wanted to be able to like, like if you're looking at a real estate listing, you know, you click on an image and then you just go from image to image, but um, at a minimum, this way you can show things in a thumbnail view, but also have the ability to make them bigger. Um, because block app is so widely confused, I'm going to select the gallery block and the spacing that we see in between all of this. Um, if you click on gallery and click on the styles, you'll see this, this um, icon. And so what this does is um, it allows you to change sort of the vertical and horizontal spacing. Now, if you want this wider, let's just say, uh, I, I don't want to use like the regular page template. Um, what I would suggest then is you've got the gallery block. If you go up here to alignment, you could do something like that. And what it does is it pulls it outside of the content area. Uh, I'll update and we can see what that looks like. So that gets all bigger. But then you say, Brian, I don't like this. Well, then what we do is we go into the page template. We swap it out with no title, and we do something like this. So we're going to kind of like fake the title. I'm going to just change this to an H1 now because we don't have a page title. Going to center it. We'll use this as sort of like a... And now we've kind of got this. Maybe we want to change the spacing between here. I just go into this paragraph. One way to do it is to just change the top margin because it gets that block gap by default, the 30 pixels. Uh, watch what happens. Maybe I want to just butt it up. And in this case, I like to select everything and put it into a group. Just I like to wrap all my things. And while I'm here, I can show you uh, new to 6.4. And for those who like Figma, uh, if you click on rename, you can say my portfolio. What that does is in list view, it changes the contents of that like folder. So like if you had a homepage that had like 20 sections, 
they don't all say group and it's easier to find. Uh, and so in groups like this, because I always like to just add just some padding around it, because then this kind of moves it down and this is more of like a true portfolio page again with that um, interaction. Hey, Brian, can you add a caption? There was a question as to whether or not the caption would show up on the light box. Uh, yes. I think. It's to the left of replace. Uh, okay, let's see what this looks like in gallery view. I don't think I love it as part of the image, but hey. Um, so it does not show, yeah, feature request or bug through GitHub. Again, I don't like, I personally don't like the way that looks. Maybe it's, I don't know if that's a theme thing or I would like to see that underneath it, but maybe there's an option to make caption, maybe in gallery, it's not that way, but there is a question about child themes. <laughs> um, oh, okay, okay, let's go. Oh, where did it go? Do you use a child theme when creating sites? Uh, so this is a big million dollar question now. Um, because of the way the block and site editor works, uh, there are arguments now that, that say you don't need to use a child theme ever again. Generally speaking, as a let's just say as a user, as somebody who says, I've downloaded a theme, I wanna make some changes in that one use case thing. Because all of the changes that get saved um, when you're making modifications to like the templates and the colors and all that kind of stuff, um, those changes are made in the, the editor and they get saved to the database. And so like if a theme is on the WordPress repository 2024 or Frost or whatever, um, if you see like a, an update nag, in those cases, you can update the theme because it doesn't overwrite your changes. It, it overwrites the code that sits below it, but the changes, the opinionations you've made are still safe. And that has always generally been the use case for a child theme. Uh, people who say, oh, I want to add, you know, an extra set of templates and my own customizations. Um, maybe the only exception would be like functions because there's really no way to do functions inside of um, like the site editor. So like if you've got things that require functions, you want to load scripts and do things of that nature, then maybe a child theme makes sense. Um, one thing I also want to show to part answer this question, but to also demonstrate the capabilities, somebody had asked about 6.5 stuff coming. Um, as a product person, somebody who designs like a basic theme and then wants to basically do all of those customizations, but serve it in a way that customers can like just one click install. They don't have to go do all of them. That's probably more the case for a child theme. Like if I had Frost and I wanted to, in the same way that Genesis worked back in the day, people want to do different designs and layouts and templates, and they want to have demo sites and they want people to buy something that they see in a demo site and then just have that be available immediately on activation. That would be the case more for a child theme than I think a single use case. Now, uh, what I'm also about to show you really quickly is, um, and this is, and I hope to got it since 6.5. I can't imagine they'll pull it out at this point because it's been several versions that we've been teased. Um, one of the best and biggest features and something that I think is gonna be um, uh, groundbreaking to WordPress is the, uh, what's coming here if you're, so back global styles, if you clip on typography um, and you click on this little icon, uh, the web font API. And this is going to change everything for a lot of people because at one point, if you wanted to add a, or use a different font, you would have to kind of use a child theme because if I downloaded Frost, which uses Outfit, but I wanted Enter, you would only be able to get that in by way of a child theme because then if you did it inside of Frost and an update happened, then you would lose your changes. Uh, this is different because this allows you to do a couple of things. So this... These are the fonts that come shipped with Frost, basically outfit and then system font in the monospace. Uh, right now, two methods of adding fonts to this. Uh, you can go right directly to this install fonts. And if you click on this, I could literally add enter. So what it does is it uses the, the Google fonts API and makes it very easy to 
select whatever weights. Now, if you go back to library, you can see enter is an available font. Uh, also, for people who like to buy fonts, uh, I'm going to just show really quickly. I've got them all here locally. I'm a fan of Avenir. And so I'm going to select all of these. Font I bought these. These are on my local machine and whatnot. So, um, so these are not available through the Google Fonts API because it's from a different foundry. But similarly, you can upload fonts as well. And I believe this will just work perfectly. Uh, and so if I go back to library, you can see now Avenir, it loads the font and in the weight. And so what this does is all of these fonts are added to the WP content slash fonts directory, not the theme directory, just its own like uploads, but fonts. What that means is if you add these and then switch themes, they're still available for you. How these surface inside of typography, like if you wanted to, like on a global level, you say outfit's great. I know Brian loves it, but I don't. Well, you upload whatever fonts you want. You can come to text. You can come here. They're now available. And if you select enter, everything on the site goes to enter. Similarly, if you're a fan of Avenir, now everything is Avenir. Um, Maybe you only want Avenir. Let me let me back out of this uh, to, 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 to reset. Maybe you like uh, outfit, but you're like, I just want my headings to be a certain one. Well, you go into headings and say, uh, I don't know. So only the headings become Avenir. And so you can, and, and this breaks down, like you could just leave it all default. And if you went into like a single post and just wanted one thing to use Avenir or enter or anything, um, you could do that as well. I think we probably have time for just this last question, but there's some other ideas for future workshops and stuff too. Okay. So I will make sure to collect those. Um, but there was a question about using the table block and just showing that off a little bit and how you might display that. There was also a question about uh, how it displays on mobile. So anything that you might want to show regarding the table block. I'm going to cheat here, I think. Um, so if you go to frostwp.com and click on styles, um, I'm just going to do this because it's it, rather than trying to like build a whole table. Um, and let me see if I can grab this into the chat and I don't know where my chat box is. There we go. I'm just going to copy paste this. Um, so you can see here, and I'll try to do the mobile version of this by pulling this out. Hopefully we can still see what I'm working on. Um, so this is what a table the table block looks like. Maybe I can try to go edit it really quickly to show everybody. Um, by default, it's just sort of this black and white version. You can make it wide width, similar to other blocks. And there's a block variation for tables that sort of has this alternating stripes. Uh, and then I'll do a quick mobile view and then I'll go in and do an edit. Let's see what happens. Hopefully it holds up. So this, so the the wide width then at a certain breakpoint just gets into like the normal viewport. Uh, I don't know what happens. Yeah, so this is as narrow as I can get this to look. But uh, so we'll just jump into the tables. So I'm editing the page that we were just literally looking at. Um, styles tables here at the bottom this is what it looks like in the editor um so you could actually fix this like kind of like spreadsheet view like if you wanted to take that and like if it was you know, like a really long list you can have all of these items sort of scroll and this header section would stay fixed uh similar with the footer know that there's so this is the this is the the variations i told you about so there's the default um, edit table. <laughs> yeah, I don't use the table block very often. So uh, I, there's probably a way to like duplicate or add these. Uh, yeah, like you could, I won't do it because I don't want to screw up our demo, but um, like if you needed to add two more columns. And then at some point, I don't know if maybe you had like eight columns, if like somehow the, the uh, media query handles like it differently or if it still smushes the eight columns into the one um, opportunity like on a edge case if you need to kind of throw in your own custom CSS to make that happen 
um, probably a good way to use custom CSS, additional CSS. There was a question is or about if there was a way to uh, freeze the header row, the top row. Yeah, that was, um, so if you select, let me get in there. Oh, oh, maybe not. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. So this is not a way to freeze it. I thought it was, I thought it was like a sticky, um, fixed with table cells. Maybe this is what we're looking for. Let's try. Um, so I've turned off fixed width. Let's see what happens. Get the experiment right alongside me. Uh, still doesn't, yeah, it's still, I don't know, probably room, some room for improvement. Uh, I'm going to back up because I think I lost some stuff on accident. There we go. Update. Sorry. I wish I could speak better to, uh, the table block, but because I don't use it as often or much at all. As we're starting to wrap up, Brian, I'm going to throw a poll up on zoom. Yes. And while Sam does that, oops. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna do this really quickly. I'm gonna go in back into the chat. I'm gonna drop my Twitter link in the chat um, for anybody who whose question I didn't answer. If you wanna hit me up on Twitter and say, hey, how do you do this? If anything, it might be good fodder for me to like go do a little five or 10 minute um, video tutorial that we can walk through and post on our YouTube channel. Uh, I know I went through things quickly, but in the spirit of trying to build things out, um, it's something Unfortunately, I had to just go quickly just to to try to make room for other things. Um, but I assure you, I've been building with WordPress since 2006, so almost 18 years. Um, and I've never been more excited about uh, where WordPress is and where it's going uh, and what it allows people to do. Uh, it's still the robust CMS and database-driven piece of software that it's always been. But what this additional layer, even though there's some pain points and it's taken a while, it allows people to go in and do things and essentially not leave WordPress, right? Things that Squarespace and Wix and Webflow and some of these others. Now, granted, some of them do things that WordPress can't and might not ever, um, but WordPress has become a lot more user-friendly to uh, people who are designing websites for other people, but also people who want to design websites for themselves. So. Uh, but anyway, use Twitter. Hit me up if there's something you want to see explained how it's done. Um, maybe we do a follow-up to this next month. Maybe just do another round of this. So um, we are at time. And I do want to thank everybody for being here. Uh, I enjoy showcasing everything that WordPress is, uh, as you can tell um, by the, the, the speed in which I talk and the smile in which my face uh, I love this dearly and would spend 24 hours a day doing this stuff. So.